Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to tell you about an amazing tool that is going to include the cutting edge AI technology of ChatGPT to the field of DevOps. And that amazing tool is none other than the Kubia tool. Alright, so let's start the action. So the first step in using Kubia is to install it into your Slack. And for that, open the Kubia documentation in your browser. And if you click on quick start, you will see the first option that says install the Slack app. And this documentation contains all the steps of connecting your Kubia to the Slack app. Once you scroll down a little bit, you will see installing the Slack app and the Kubia app to your Slack workspace. You simply have to click this button. And once you do that, it is going to redirect you to a new page that looks like this. From here, you have the option to select the workspace. Right now, I have a single workspace, which is not giving me much options. But if you have different workspaces, then you can select the workspace in which you want to add Kubia. After that, it says that Kubi Junior is requesting permissions to access the workspace. And after reading all the permissions, and if you are okay with it, then simply click on allow. After a while, a pop-up like this will appear that says that Kubia has been installed into your Slack workspace. Now, let's quickly go back to our Slack. You can see that Kubi Junior has been successfully installed under the apps. Now, you have two options. First option is to directly integrate with Kubi from here. Or the other option is you can go to any of the channels you want and then interact with Kubi from there. You can select any of the two options. Both are fine. Now, here you can see that they have also provided you the link for the Kubia documentation and there is also a management interface available at this link. So, let's go to this link. So, the Kubia dashboard looks something like this. Firstly, you have the main dashboard that monitors the productivity gains, action outcomes, etc. Then you have the option for different connection, action history and so on. So, if you click on the connections, you can see that right now there are no connections, but if you click on new connection, you will see that Kubia has the option to connect to multiple platforms. These platforms will be AWS, GitHub, Jira, Jenkins, Kubernetes, custom Docker image, etc. So I'm going to start by connecting the Kubia with my GitHub account. So I'm going to select GitHub from here. Now once you do that, you have to click on install the GitHub app. And once you click on it, it is going to ask you that where do you want to install Kubia AI. So I'm going to select my account in which way I want to install it. Then it is going to ask you to select the repositories for which you want to install it. I'm going to select it for all the repositories and click on install. Once you do that, you will see that Kubia AI has been successfully installed on your account. Now we are all ready to interact to our GitHub account via the Kubia. So I'm going to head back to my Slack account. So now let's see if Kubi interacts with our GitHub account and gives us the required answer or not. So for that, you have to firstly mention or tag Kubi Junior and then you're going to ask the question. So I'm going to say list down all the public repositories in my account. Once you hit run, you will see that a brain like this will appear that says that QBJ interacted with brain. So if you click on it, there is one reply. And upon selecting, you can see that it says that riding the GitHub wave to find out the, what you need. So all you have to do is wait for it to generate the response. All right, so the response has been generated. And if you go a little up, it says that Git skill curve has 11 repositories available. And this is the name of my GitHub account. And if you scroll down a little bit, it has provided you all the repositories along with the description, the created date and timestamp for all the repositories as well. Now let's prompt it in another way. So I'm going to say, give me the name of the repository having a pull request. Let's run it and wait for it to generate the response. Once again, a brain with a PA, which means that QB is connecting with our GitHub account. Okay, so it is saying to assist you better. Could you please specify the repository you are interested in? Okay, so it should gather the information about the repository on its own, but still I'm going to provide it the name of my repository. Now let's see how it responds. Okay, so it didn't provide me any information. It says that a values or sources are unrelated to the name. Let's give it an other prompt. So this time I'm going to ask it to create a repository. So now I'm going to prompt it. Can you please create a new public repository with the name Kubia XAI and description as AI generated repo? Now let's see if it can create a repository for us or not. Okay, so it is saying that to create a new public repository, I need your confirmation. This action will be performed in the organization. So I'm going to ask it 
to proceed. Okay, so the operation has been successfully executed and it says here are the next steps you can take. And this is a path for our repository. Now, let's quickly head back to our skill curve account in the GitHub and let's go to the repositories to see all the repositories present. And you can see that QBIX AI repository has been created with the description AI generated repo. This means that you can also use Kubia not only to find information about your repositories, but you can also create repositories using the Kubia tool. Now, let's ask it to create a folder inside the newly created repository. So, I'm going to prompt it. Can you create a new folder with the name codes inside my Kubia XA repository? And instead of can you, I'm simply going to say create a new folder. Let's see if it can create a new folder inside the newly created repository or not. Okay, so it is saying that creating a new folder directly through GitHub's interface is not supported. You will need to do this locally on your machine. Okay, so it was able to create the repository in my GitHub account, but it was not able to create a new folder inside the repository. And in this way, you can perform multiple operations on your GitHub repository like creating push requests, pull requests, fetching out which pull requests are performed on which repository, listing out the repository, creating new repositories, and so on. Now that you have seen that how you can integrate GitHub with your Kubia tool and interact with it like ChatGPT, now I am going to show its integration with AWS. So firstly, head to the Kubia documentation and from here you have to click on Amazon Web Services. So the first thing you need to do is to create a role on AWS for Kubia to perform actions. So I'm going to head to my AWS account where I have logged into the console and from here I'm going to search role. Once you are inside the roles page, you have to click on create role. For the trusted entity type, you have to click on AWS account. Then scroll down a little bit and then an AWS account, you have to click on another AWS account and for the account ID, you have to paste this value which is written right here in the documentation. So once you have entered the account ID, this is actually the account ID for the Kubia. You don't have to do anything else and simply click on next. Then on the permissions page, you have to provide the required permissions to Kubia. I am going to simply provide it administrator access. You can give access according to your requirements and simply click on next. Then for the role details, firstly you have to provide the role name. I am going to call it Kubia role and I am going to give it the same description. So once all of this is done, scroll down to the end of the page and click on create role. So once you do that, it is going to create the role by the name Kubia role for you. So once this is done, head back to your Kubia dashboard. And from here, you have to click on connections. Once you are on the page, you have to click on new connection. And from the available option, you have to select AWS. Then upon scrolling down, you will have the option to select the account configuration. Firstly, you have to provide your account ID. So you have to go to AWS account, click on your username. And this is the account ID. So copy it from here, come back to your dashboard and paste it here. Then you have to provide the role name. So the role name in my case was Kubia role. You have to provide the name which you provided to the role. And then you have to provide the region. Head back to your AWS account and you can see that currently I am in the region which is US East 1. So from here in the regions, I'm going to select the US East 1 and click. Once you do that, a pop-up will appear that will say that AWS connection has been successfully created. Now, once this is done, we are all set to interact with our AWS account via the Kubia. So I'm going to head back to my Slack account. So now I'm going to start prompting it. Firstly, I am going to tag the Kobe Junior and I am going to prompt it that list all the roles in my account. Hit run and wait for it to generate the response. Okay, so it is saying that working on that for you, I am interacting with AWS now. And you can see that the response has been generated. So if I scroll up a little bit, you can see that it has provided me a bunch of roles which were present inside my AWS account. And for each role, it has provided me the IAM role the role ID, the ARN and the creation date and it is also listed down that there are a total of 40 IAM roles present. Alright, now let's prompt it again. So once again, I'm going to tag QB Junior and I'm going to say list all IAM policies. Let's see that in addition to roles, whether it can also list down all the IAM policies or not. Okay, so it is accessing the AWS for your request. And it has generated the response. So if you scroll all the way up, you will see that it has found a total of 1214 IAM policies. And for each policy, it has provided its name, 
the policy ARN, the description and the default version. Now out of these IAM policy, let's try to attach the policy to our IAM user. So I am going to copy the ARN of this policy and I am going to attach this policy to the user using the ARN. So I am going to prompt it, attach the policy having ARN, this value to Kubia role. Now let's see if it can attach it or not. Okay, so the response has been generated. So it says that operation you requested has been completed successful, but it does not contain any specific details about the result. So it has not provided me any resources, but it has says that it has been successful. Now let's head back to our AWS console. And from here, I'm going to go to the roles. And from the roles, I'm going to look for the Kubia role. And let's see whether the new policy has been attached to it or not. And yes, you can see that previously there was a single administrator access policy, but right now this new policy has also been attached to our role. So that's a really cool thing that you can easily attach all the policies that you want to grant access to a particular role in AWS. Now let's see if Kubia is also able to create different resources in our AWS account. So let's say I want to create an S3 bucket in the AWS account. Let's see whether Kubia can do it or not. So for that, I'm going to prompt it, create an S3 bucket named Kubia-AI in the region US East 1. Let's see if this data is sufficient for it to create an S3 bucket or if it will require any other resources. So Kubia is going to take some time. It is firstly going to see whether a bucket by the same name is already present or not. And if it is not already present, then it is going to look for the permissions to create the bucket. And if it has the permission, then it is going to create it. Let's see the replies. Okay, so it is saying that an error occurred in valid location constraint when calling the create bucket operation. Okay, so let's try this again, but without defining the region. So I'm going to remove this region part and let's see how it responds. Okay, so for some reason, it was not creating the bucket in the US East 1 region. But when I changed the region to US West 1, it has provided me that the operation completed successfully and also provided the location. So obviously this link isn't going to work. So I'm going to head back to my AWS account and from here I'm going to go to the S3. Once you land on the S3 bucket, once the buckets will be loaded, you are going to see that the Kubia-AI bucket has been created and you can also verify the date and the time that it has been just created. So you can see that there are multiple buckets present over here, but it still managed to create a new S3 bucket in this region. So now let's prompt it once again. This time I'm going to say list all S3 buckets. Let's see if it will fetch all the buckets without any region or not. Okay, so the response has been generated and you can see that these are all the buckets that are currently present inside our account. And this is the bucket that we have just created. And just like you can create the buckets using the Kubia tool, you can also delete the buckets using it. So now I'm going to say delete the S3 bucket named Kubia-AI. Let's see how it responds to it. And let's see if it can actually delete the bucket or not. Okay, so it is taking some time for performing the operation. And it says that to delete the S3 bucket name Kubia AI, I will need to execute a specific action and it wants the permission to proceed. So I'm going to say proceed. Now, once again, the AWS operation is in progress and you can see that the operation completed successfully and it is also giving us a suggestion that it wants to give us a quick update on the AWS action we requested that remove bucket command was executed successfully. Now let's verify it from my AWS account. So this is currently the bucket name. Let me refresh the page to see if it is present there or not. Okay, let's wait for the buckets to load. And let's scroll down to see if the bucket is present or not. The bucket should be present in between these two, but since we have deleted it from the Kubia app, so it has also been deleted from the AWS account. So you can see that the Kubia tool has made your DevOps experience quite interesting and quite efficient. You don't actually have to perform the operation. You can simply prompt it like you can prompt ChatGPT to perform different operations and the task on the DevOps will be done for you using the Kubia tool. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Keep learning. Keep enjoying.